Hey yo, what is going on everybody? It's your boy X coming at y'all with a brand new video. And in this video, we talk about the top 10 PGs in NBA 2K20, my team, in my personal opinion. This is finishing up the little, you know, top five list that we've been doing. We've gone over centers, power forward, small forward, shooting guards yesterday and today. PGs. The reason we're making this list is because it looks like we're not getting any content from 2K today, so we're dropping it. I was going to wait until tomorrow if we got some buzz reads today just to make sure we were all up to date, but 2K figured that these flash packs were enough content for two whole days, meaning we'll probably get something tomorrow, which may make this list a little bit inaccurate, but it's okay because we got 10 solid picks out here. And uh, yeah. We should uh, get going with this, so let's hop over and show you guys the first card, who, as many of you guys probably aren't surprised with, involves the glitch players. We've had so many of these new glitch players in here, but coming in at my, at my number 10 spot is, surprisingly, not going to be any of these, you know, normal PGs. He is over here. I keep messing him. Hito Turkoglu, who has a secondary position um, PG, and you guys can see there's a lot of actually really good Hito Turkoglu cards with a lot of nice diamond contracts and diamond shoes. He goes for about 200k, actually a pretty decent card. Now, Hito Turkoglu, I, the main reason he's a great PG is because he is six foot ten, and he does have the LaMarcus Aldridge base, which helps him shoot really well, um, you know, in general. He does have Hop Quick Draw. Um, I'm still not the biggest fan of, you know, LaMarcus Aldridge. Um, it's just, ah, you know, but you know, it is what it is. It's just a little too slow, but he has 39 awesome Hall of Fame badges that just help him out and everything. Pick a popper, relentless finisher, floor general, ankle breaker, slippery off ball, range shitter, dimer, quick draw, clamps, hot zone hunter, hot star, green machine, intimidator, flexible release, dead eye, contact, unpluggable, fancy, tight handles, pro touch, quick first step, downhill handles for days, needle, thudder, 20 gold badges as well. And again, the main thing that makes Yo Turkoglu just good at the PG is because of how tall he is. It just allows him to, you know, clamp up and just play good interior defense, good outside defense, just good defense everywhere because of how tall he is. Um, just making a massive mismatch um, that you can just really abuse. And he has awesome post game as well. So if you get an undersized guy, it's just so overpowered. I hate the way um, these position locks are this year because it just, it doesn't feel right. But you know, it is what it is. And I gotta make the list based off of who the best is but also has a 94 shot midi 97 shot three 80 standing dunk 85 driving dunk and 89 ball handle with amazing playmaking 82 block 88 steel 92 perimeter 84 interior has an 80 in both rebounding which is pretty good but again for our pg we don't really need that and then a 92 speed ball and acceleration again Hito turkoglu is an amazing card a bit of a niche player because i feel like you kind of got to like lamarcus aldridge or base 11 to really um hone in on him and his jump shot and just him in general. But I think once you get used to it, he can be a really, really nice card. And uh, to start off our list at number 10, I definitely don't think it's a, a bad pick. So coming in at number nine, we have Galaxy Opals and Wayne Wade, one that maybe people might think is a little bit higher. But personally, um, because I've played a park so much, use base 98 and all that sort of stuff, you know, the whole Dwayne Wade base and all that sort of stuff doesn't impress me too much. It's still amazing and it's still awesome. But for me personally, it's just not as much of a wow factor as I think it is for too many other people. But you can't deny Dwayne Wade is a very, very good card at both, both of his positions. He could be a great card, but you really, if I'm being honest, only want to run him at the PG. I feel like at the shooting guard, it's a little iffy. Uh, because he's 6'4", but the main thing that makes Dwayne Wade insane is because he's one of the collect level cards, I mean, look at all of these 99s that he has in his stats, a 98 shot, 3, 99 midi, 99 speed ball and acceleration, 99 in everything playmaking, his inside scoring is all 99 besides a 90 post hook and a 90 standing dunk, has a 95 interior, 99 perimeter, a 99 lateral quickness, 99 steel, 99 block, 95 shot, that's 95 in both the rebounding, and has 59 all of Fame badges, contact, fancy giant slayer has put back boss as your PG, which is kind of crazy. Catch and shoot, dead eye, flexible release, green machine, hot start, hot zone hunter, quick draw, range extender, ankle breaker, dimer, downhill, floor channel handles for days, needle better, quick first step, unpluckable, tight handles, clamps, intimidator, interceptor, pick, dodger, pick, pocket, defensive leader, everything that you would need. It also has two gold badges, deep fades, and bailout just to help him out. Now, I understand I might catch a little bit of flack. People are going to say, you know, maybe I put Dwayne Wade a little bit too low on the list. But 
Again, personally, not too wowed by the whole Dwayne Wade base. It's still pretty easily um, guardable if you know what you're doing. Because if you understand that it's a quick base, you know you can't um, drop too far. And you'll be pretty okay for it. But nonetheless, it's still an amazing card. And is still, if you have them for free, a great option to run at the PG. The next card on our list coming in at number 8 is a Galaxy Opal Ben Simmons after Evo, not before. I had somebody who was a little bit confused about why I threw a Ben Simmons card on a top list um, for like, P oh, an S plus tier uh, because he has whole horrible shooting. But I'll show the quick differences right here. You can see before Evo, he has a 77 three-point shot. And if we go down here, bronze ba badges for shooting. I'm sorry, I have hiccups, which is weird. <laughs> bronze badges for shooting, like range extender, tireless shooter, catch and shoot volume. But then when we go over here and check out the Evo version of Ben Simmons, he has a 90 shot three right there, which um, is the only attribute that Evo's up there. But then has range extender, hot zone, hunter, green machine, flexible release, and you know all of the other Hall of Fame badges that he has. But I think of the seven bronzes, like I think six go to Hoff and one goes to gold, which is um pretty good. But he just becomes amazing. Has catch and shoot, um, floor general, obviously range, hot zone hunter, green machine, flexible as we just talked about, unpluckable, dimer, pick dodger, pick pocket, clamps, defensive leader, interceptor, intimidator, quick first step, pogo stick, downhill. As a six ten guy, it's just unreal. Bailout, contact, fancy, you know, pro touch. Has 20 goal badges as well, like rebound, chase, a post, of lockdown, giant slayer, all this other stuff. And the reason Ben Simmons, again, is cheesy is because one is release actually pretty nice, pretty easy to green, but it's because he's six foot ten. Now, Ben Simmons, even though he has all of those shooting badges, isn't the best shooter because he doesn't have any sort of hot zones on the three point line. So you'd be a little bit wary of that. It's just time your release is a little bit better, but it's still an insane card. And if we check out his stats, I mean, again, He's just godly. 92 post fade and post hook. Has a 94 mitting, 93 point shot, 90 driving, I mean standing dunk, and 97 driving, 92 ball handle with insane playmaking, 89 block, 97 steal, 95 perimeter defense, and 84 interior, 89 offensive, 90 defensive rebounding, and 97 steed. Speed, 94 speed ball, and 97 acceleration with a 95 lateral quickness. Ben Simmons is just godly. I mean, he's just super tall and is probably one of the better perimeter and interior, just better all around defenders that we have in the game because he's six foot ten, can just guard everything, and can just switch. Great. What makes these taller PGs amazing is the fact that you can switch them just on to everybody. You can just set your thing to switch everything, and you'll never really have too much of a mismatch with some of these cards, which I think is amazing and why so many people flock towards these taller PGs. And the fact that size is probably the best stat, and Ben Simmons. Being one of the taller PGs definitely has an advantage in that category. Coming in at number 7, we have Galaxy Opal Magic Johnson. We can check out the after Evo stats as well, but I wanted to find one without a shoe, and I didn't want to scroll too far, but it looks like a lot of people that have Evoed Magic Johnson have also thrown a uh, Dom shoe on There we go. So it's a little bit difficult to find. But again, Magic Johnson, what makes him great is he's six foot nine, And just the reason that I like... Uh, Magic Johnson just a little bit better than Ben Simmons as I feel like he's a little bit more of a consistent shooter because although his release is whack and it's kind of slow he has some hot zones which allows him to shoot a little bit better than somebody like Simmons and Magic Johnson in my opinion has some of the best dribble sigs in the game if not the best dribble sigs in the game which just make him super cheesy and after Evo he gains I think it's half range extender right there which basically put him I think the Evo is what put him above Ben Simmons for me, but before with only gold range, stuff like that, maybe a little bit below, but after Evo, getting some boost in the three-point shot and stuff like that, definitely, I think, gets the nod. Uh, but then, where is all of my badges? Floor general, catch and shoot, range, quick draw, acrobat, green machine, post spin, flexible release, ankle breaker, flashy passer, ooh, and timer, unpluggable, pick dodger, tight handles, clamps, defensive leader, interceptor, intimidator, quick first step, needle thinner handles for days, downhill, um, bailout, contact finisher, post uh, but I said post, pro touch, deep hooks, fancy forward and giant slayer. Also has 26 gold badges as well. And this Magic Johnson is just so good at everything in the game. Like, so good at everything. I mean, you can see the 94 post fade, a 98 post hook, which is why he's so cheesy. Um, so many people that run him will take him into the post and just post hook over everybody. I'm not saying it's not an awful thing to go up against or even watch, but it is an amazing strategy. 
that is super cheesy this year. Uh, 96 mid range, 93 three point shot, an 80 standing dunk, 90 driving dunk, has a 98 ball handle, insane playmaking, an 80 block, 90 sealed, 96 perimeter defense, 85 interior defense, 89 offensive, 92 defensive rebounding, and a 96 speed ball and acceleration with a 96 lateral quickness. Magic is just amazing. The dribble six being cheesy just helps him out so much you can break so many ankles and then a not too bad release to help him out there finishing is awesome defense is crazy magic definitely a top tier pg and for sure one that i think a lot of people already know is amazing but if you need a good pg definitely a pretty good option so coming in at number six we have galaxy opaluka dante who might be a bit of a controversial pick but it is somebody who i love and i honestly almost put him higher but I just couldn't warrant putting him above the guys that I have in the top five because I think our top five is pretty solidified. So Luka just barely nudge is out. But I love this Luka Doncic chart. It probably has one of the better releases in the game, in my opinion. I think it's just so easy to time, so easy to green that it's like, how could you not like it? You know what I mean? Like, I just love um, this Luka card just He's, he's just got me. I mean, how could you not love him? But again, what's great about Luca is not only is he um, a PG that has an awesome release, but he's six foot seven, which helps him out a bunch. Like really a bunch. Um, has 41 Hall of Fame badges as well. But let's check out the stats first. We've been doing the badges first. Sorry, buddy. Has a 90 post fade, 79 post hook, which is a little weak. But you know, we don't really need too many post hooks. I know it's a cheesy strategy, but for a PG, I don't personally like doing it. So for me, it's not a big deal. Has a 95 mid-range, 98 three-point shot again with that money release. It's a 60 standing dunk, 85 driving dunk to help him out a lot. His finishing ability may seem a little weak, but it's absolutely insane. Has a 97 ball handle with great playmaking. Has a 75 block, 89 steal, 89 perimeter defense, and 86 interior. I know it's a little bit worse than some other guys we've showed, maybe like three or four tiers, but there is a shoe that you can put on him. I wanted to see if I could find somebody who knew the way and put it on him right here. This shoe, I think it's a KD shoe. Uh, it won't let me show it to you. But if you can see it down in the corner there, it's a KD shoe, and this is what it boosts down here. It boosts his steel perimeter defense and interior defense. You throw that shoe on him and lateral quickness and pass perception. You throw that shoe on him, and he becomes a god. And that's when I used my magic, my Luka, and he was godly and so much better than any other PG at the time, and still is so good now. He also has good rebounding and 94 speed ball and acceleration with a 92 lateral quickness, but 95 with the shoe boost, which just helps him out a bunch. And he's got the 41 hot badges to help him out in everything. Catch and shoot, floor general, acrobat, relentless, ankle breaker, range extender, quick draw, dimer, pick dodger, hot start, clamps, hot zone, hunter, green machine, flexible release, dead eye, unpluckable, tight handles, tireless defender, quick first step, contact, needle threader, handles for days, fancy forward, downhill, giant slayer, pro touch, bailout, and 23. Good goal badges. He has deep posts despite well, having a 79 uh, hook shot, which is a little interesting. <laughs> Rebound chaser as well. Just a bunch of good badges. Again, might be a bit of a controversial pick to have Luca, you know, in the top 10 for PGs. I know a lot of people might put some other ones above him, but I easily think Luca is probably one of the top PGs in the game. Um, again, I wanted to put him top five. I just couldn't warrant it. But for anybody who you know, wants a nice PG that's still meta, but may feel different than some of the other ones like that's not like Magic or Ben Simmons, you know, just tall, can't really shoot well, and can just do everything in general. This Luka is amazing for that. Just offensive beast that can still hold his own on defense, and it's just a playmaking god. Definitely one that I would pick up. And coming in at number five, cracking our top five right here is Galaxy Opal Michael Jordan. One I might catch a little bit of flag for because I didn't put him higher up on the list. But if I'm being honest, the four people that I have above this Michael Jordan easily still are better than MJ. And that's just because MJ is kind of capped a little bit this year because his dribbling animation is pretty good. His jump shot, not too bad, but just not that top tier jumper. But what makes this Michael Jordan insane is that this Go MJ is easily the best slasher in the game and even probably one of the best perimeter defenders in the game, if not the best perimeter defender in the game. And what makes this Jordan amazing is usually, you know, we have a Jordan who's a small forward, um, sh small forward shooting guard. And this one is a small shooting guard PG and running with the PG is godly because he has 99 in every single stat, which may be confusing to you guys as to why we're not putting him higher on the list. But again, I just think that Jordan's jump shot this year just falls a little bit flat for me, which sucks because, you know, you want MJ to be amazing. But, you know, it is what it is. Has 65 Hall of Fame badges. I think the most 
that we've covered, if not the most, in the game. So, kind of crazy. But, I mean, if we look at all the Hall of Fame badges, he literally covers everything that there is in the game. I didn't want to cover, you know, this Michael Jordan a little bit, like, too in-depth, just because I think we all know how crazy this Michael Jordan card is. 99 every single stat, 65 Hall of Fame badges that literally cover every single thing that you would need in the game. Like, there's not a single Hall of Fame badge, personally, I think, that he needs like added like these other ones that he has like red protector drop set for brick wall moving truck are all ones that i really don't think that he needs hop they're just kind of there they have my a little bit and is insane but for his price point definitely is not worth picking up i mean nearly four mil and most of them go for over four mil it's just not worth it to me but if you pull one i think so it might be a great option for that uh amazing mt but if you have them definitely an amazing option to run and i doubt anybody that has this goat jordan isn't running them in their lineup Coming in at number four, we have Pink Diamond Glitch Giannis, a card that I think everybody knew eventually was going to pop up in the squad, and here he is. He's a 6 foot 11 PG, and for a time, was the cheesiest in the game, but his throne has been taken away because we have three guys above him. Has 30 all the fame badges, which I know for some cards now is a little bit low, but he's a pink diamond, so it definitely is in the higher end for them. But has a bunch of the ones that you need. Floor general, green machine, flexible release, quick first step, needle threader, downhill, dimer, pickpocket, pick dodger, pro touch, clamps, defensive, leader, interceptor, intimidator, fancy footwork, contact, pogo stick, has gold range as well, post move lockdown, quick draw, you know, all of this wonderful stuff, hot zone hunter, and he actually has a really nice release. Once it's on gold, quick draw, and when it's on hop, it's actually money, um, and even on gold, it's still definitely pretty good. And with Giannis, he actually gets some nice boost. Now, I would recommend still putting a three-point shoot on him, even though he has gold range and stuff like that, just to get him into the higher level of shooting, get him into that 90 three-point shot. But he's still a beast. The only thing he's really not insane at is the post game, but it's fine. Has a 94 midi and a 84 three-point shot, which is why I say you should probably just throw a little bit of a shoe on him, because you can give him plus three with a shoe and then plus four with a floor general, and he gets up to a 90, which is amazing. Has an 85 standing dunk, 97 driving dunk, has an 89 ball handle and with amazing playmaking, 82 block, 96 steal and perimeter defense, and has an 86 interior as well. Awesome rebounding, which is why having silver rebound chaser, a little bit interesting. And a 97 speed, 95 speed ball, and a 97 acceleration with 96 level quickness. Giannis is just so cheesy because his player build is so long can cover everything he's hop set is just so crazy the defense is insane the amount of chase down blocks that Giannis gets is just unreal he can dunk over everybody he can finally shoot good and just do everything on the court at just an elite level like he is the opal ben simmons just on steroids and i am kind of scared for when we get a opal Giannis that can play pg because that is going to be official just any game it's over and everybody is screwed because Giannis is just he's too overpowered Cracking into the top three, we have Galaxy Opal LeBron James. Now, this one, I really don't think it matters too much before or after Evo because all of this Evo does, as I'll show you right here, is if we look here, he has... Oh, this one is a shoe. Here we go. This is the non-Evo one. I'm tripping. Um, you can see there's no boost anything here. And then if we go to the one that's evo he gets a 99 post fade, post hook, and post moves right there. As well as I think a few extra, no, not any extra hot badge. He gets nothing extra badge wise, so I'm tripping there. But basically, it just makes him a little bit better as his secondary position at center. But you never want to run LeBron at center, run him at the PG. That's where he gets his bread and butter. But he's a six foot eight PG, which is just insane. And again, after Evo has a 99 post fade, post hook, and post moves. It's a 97 midi, 94 three point shot, and 95 standing, 98 driving dunk, 94 ball handle with awesome playmaking, a 90 block, 92 steal, 97 perimeter defense, a 90 interior, 90 offensive and defensive rebounding, a 97 speed to ball acceleration, and has 45 Hall of Fame badges. Now, there's one thing with LeBron's. I guess release you can take is a negative. With LeBron, he has an awesome jump shot that you can actually green pretty consistently, but he can't really shoot corner threes because it pulls him in a little bit um, from it there. And I think for some people, maybe that would hurt them a little bit. But for me personally, whenever I'm using my PG, it's kind of cheesing around the perimeter at you know the wings and the top of the key, not really shooting in the corner. So it doesn't really hurt it too much. If you're not running ball with LeBron James, that could be something that could hurt you because you're getting a lot of twos. But for me, it really isn't too bad, I don't think. 
But with his 45 Hall of Fame badges, catch and shoot, volume, I don't know if I said volume, well he does have volume shooter, floor general, acrobat, range extender, quick draw, green machine, flexible release, deep fades, dead eye, unpluckable, lob city finisher, tight handles, dimer, pickpocket, rim protector, pick dodger, quick first step, clamps, defensive leader, heart crusher, intimidator, needle setter, moving chuck, handles for days, pogo stick, downhill, post move, lockdown, pro touch, giant slayer, contact, fancy footwork, and 28 other gold badges to help him out and do everything. I mean, it's LeBron James. I think many people knew roughly what the top three four arts was going to be looking like. <laughs> um, and LeBron easily fits in there. Some people might think he's number one, but I think my top two is pretty solidified and pretty um, easy to guess. But with LeBron James, I mean, he can basically punish anybody, shoot from deep, finish on everybody's head, play awesome defense, rebound, play, make everything that you would need out of a PG or a court in general, LeBron can do. Absolutely insane card. Just personally, not worth the uh, price point that he's going for with 1.4 mil. Coming in at number two, another one that might surprise a few people, glitched Galaxy Opal, Tracy McGrady. Some people might be thinking, why isn't he number one? But again, there's some one that some people sleep on. But with Tracy McGrady, absolutely insane. Six foot eight PG with the Trey Burke base and some of the best animations of the game. Just absolutely godly. So green light. And he's just amazing. 53 Hall of Fame badges that help him out in everything. Catch and shoot, volume shooter, floor general, slippery off ball, range extender, ankle breaker, quick draw, lob city finisher, dimer, pick dodger, pick pocket, hot zone hunter, clamps, defensive leader, interceptor, intimidator, green machine, rebound chaser, <laughs> flexible release, consistent in contact, deep fades, fancy forward, giant slayer, pro touch, bailout, downhill, handles for days, needle threader, quick first step, tight handles, unpluggable, and dead eye, and 12 other ones to help him out as well. Nice and cheeky look like that. And then his stats are just insane. 97 post fade, 90, 85 post hook, and 99 mid range, 98 three point shot, 85 standing, 99 driving, is a 98 ball handle with insane playmaking, 90 block, 97 steal, 98 perimeter, and a 90 interior, 84 in offensive and defensive rebounding, and a 98 speed spool acceleration, and lateral quickness. T Mac is just godly. One of the best slashes in the game, one of the best shooters in the game. And a really, really good defender. Just offensively is a god. And is so, so difficult to stop. And we all just know how um, cheesy T-Mac is. And actually went below a mil MT. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of a W. But still is a super expensive card. But if you want to just shred the competition. And have basically an endgame card. That I don't really think can get better. T-Mac's your guy. And last but not least, here we are with the number one PG in the game, in my opinion, Galaxy Opal Thon Maker. And the main reason I have Thon up at number one is because he's the tallest PG in the game, has some of the best animations in the game, and it's just godly. I mean, a seven foot point guard, you know it's gonna be cheesy. And he has a 95 midi, 95 three point shot, and 91 speed point acceleration. At that tall, it's just godly. 95 ball handle with amazing playmaking, a 90 standing dunk, 95 driving dunk, 88 post hook, 90 post fade, 88 offensive and defensive slash re rebounding, as a 84 interior, 89 perimeter, a 90 lateral quickness, 84 steal, 88 block, and it's just insane. I mean, with how you know, long his arms are and how tall he is, all of his defensive stats are just juiced up even taller, you know, even bigger because of how tall he is and just <laughs> how much space he takes up on the court. His badges, 40 of them Hall of Fame, Acrobat, Consistent, Contact, Fancy, Fast Break, Finisher, Pro Touch, Catch and Shoot, Green Machine, Quick Draw, Range Extender, Hot Zone, Hunter, Volume Shooter, was one of the better releases in the game in my opinion, Ankle Breaker, Timer, Downhill, Handles for Days, Floor General, Quick First Step, Tight Handles, Unpluggable, Needle, Thetter, Box, Pogo Stick, Rebound Chase, Tiles Defender, Trapper, and has Gold Clamps and Intimidator as well. I mean, if I'm being honest, I think this Thon Maker is probably going to be the best PG in the game for a while until we get our Galaxy Level PG Giannis. Then I think maybe Thon can be overtaken, but it's just absolutely absurd some of the cards that we have in the game, um, especially this Opal Thon Maker. Uh, let me know what you guys thought about my list down in the comment section below. If you guys did like it, please drop a like on the video and subscribe if you guys are new on that road to 6.2k. We're nearly there. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see y'all in the next video.